<laughs> oh man, I hate Mondays. No, nah, man, it's Tuesday. Wait, 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 wait. What day is it? You know what day it is. Tuesday. Cruise day, Tuesday. Oh, fuck yeah. Grab a cold one. It's Bruise Day Tuesday. Here's Drez and Big Nate. A little worried about these ones. We'll see. I was going to say, I'm going to let you do it first. There we go. Woo! All right. Welcome in. Another Bruise Day Tuesday. And I have some more beers that came a long way. These ones have been sitting even longer than the last batch, <laughs> obviously. Um, but from my trip to Bermuda, I did, you know, I, we like it, we, I mentioned a couple weeks ago when we did that first Bermuda show, we had a check bag so I could bring back booze. And I was trying to figure out what beers to, and what to bring back. And I went to the little convenience store that was very conveniently located. Just, I mean... So we stayed at the Cocoa Reefs for the wedding, and then we stayed with one of uh, BB's friends, you know, because she she lived in Bermuda for eight years or something. So uh, Dan was kind enough to put us up, and basically his house has a great view and stuff on his back uh, deck and everything. But right out front, he's got like a little driveway. There's a little kind of a, I would say it's extended driveway. So maybe that's. 100 feet, if that, and then there's the main kind of road, and then right across the street is a convenience store. That so is convenient. it's super convenient. So I popped over there numerous different times. At one point, I was like, well, let me see what beers they have in their little uh, beer fridge. And sure enough, I happened to find four different big boys. I hadn't had any of them. Now, obviously, these beers are not from Bermuda, <laughs> as when we read them. But I was like, all right, well, here's a, a show out of it. So we can talk more about oh. Bermuda as I drink Amsterdam's Navigator. Extra taste, it says right on here. It's an intense blonde beer brewed in Holland at a nice hearty 8% ABV. And I've got the uh, 86 original intense blonde beer. Uh, it's called the 86 because it's an 8.6% ABV. But when I think of 86 I think of uh, restaurants when uh, yeah, yeah. when you ask something from the movie from yeah, the menu, you it's kill it. you eighty six it, you eighty six it. So I don't know if that bodes well. I don't know if it does either. So all these beers, as you can tell, high ABV. These are the kind of ones. I guess these are like they're the European version of malt liquor. I would say you know the the stuff that's not very flavorful or tasty, tasty or reserve. but it's yeah their version of all right. This will get you. And in fact, when I bought these. The guy even said was he like, or I bought him, and then I think it was actually the next day when I went in to get something else. He asked me like how I liked them and stuff, and then I told him, oh well, actually I'm saving them, whatever. He's just like, well, I'll tell you what. One time we got the whatever beer it was that was like twelve point one percent, and he's like, man, I couldn't even keep that in stock. People were beating that up. I'm like, yeah, everybody that's just trying to get drunk out here on in Bermuda. Mm. All right, so this is. Again, my expectations are a little low. But it's, a, it's a blonde, huh? Does that smell like That's, a, what we're know what we know blondes no. to be? Mine smells kind of like dry erase markers. <laughs> okay. Actually, all right, that does taste for some reason I just assumed these were all lagers. I didn't even barely even looked at them, frankly. I just looked them up on a tab to see if I had them before. It tastes a little different than I had anticipated. This is this is more like a Belgian to me, almost. It kind of has that slight banana yeah. to it, you know? And obviously the high ABV, maybe that's part of it as well. It's, I mean, it's definitely 100% over here, not what I was expecting. Um, I mean, they're in Europe. They, they, they can do better than Steel Reserve, I suppose. I will say it's better than a Steel Reserve. Yeah. All right. Well, either way, these are from that cool little convenience store that was right by Dan's house. So speaking of Dan, so we went... You know, like I said, we went to the wedding and did all that. That was great. And then the first thing we did was when we uh, moved over to the other side of the island, took a taxi, met up with Dan and Jen, his girlfriend, and we went to, I think it was called House of India. 
Are, are you a, a Indian food? I love of? Indian food. Okay. See, I never really got into it until I met BB. She loves it. That's her favorite kind of food. So she really wanted to get a good curry in while we're over there. The thing that I love about Indian restaurants is the naan bread. Are you all about the naan bread? I, I, naan, huge, naan, whatever. I'm a huge fan. Well, uh, speaking of huge, the, that basmati rice and the dip it in the sauce. Oh, mm, it's so good. But it's actually so, what I had for dinner last what, night. Oh, really? Oh, nice. Well, what made this place awesome was I finally was able to get, I think they just call it, is it the family nan or whatever? But it's one piece of nan bread, but I mean, it is the size almost of like a full Benny's pizza. I mean, it's this <laughs> I mean, I, if you're watching on Facebook Live or YouTube, I'm trying to do a, a big circle. I'd say that, you know, the standard stereotypical like metal trash cans, the lid yeah. of that, the size of a pizza, basically. And not only on top of that, but I like that other kind of nan bread. What is it? The, the kind that's got like the little sweetness, the little pink, like little coconutty kind of things. I can't remember the name. That's the thing. I don't even open the menu at these places. I just let, you just let her order. Let BB just run wild with all the... Indian cuisine that she loves to get. And I, I mean, I always love it all. I mean, there's usually, you know, I like these ones better than that one or whatever, but I'll, it's all always very edible and pretty damn good. No, they, they absolutely know what they're doing. Like I, I think around here, the only one that really comes to mind is India garden, right? Yes. I'm assuming they're still, it's been a while. Blacksburg. There's actually a new place that opened in Blacksburg. I don't know if it's, I don't think it's Indian, but it's along the lines. That one that's right near the library. I'm a, that I don't know. What is that place called? I, I always, like, anytime, particularly Radford gets a new restaurant, I'm always like, come on, Indian food. Come on in. And it's never. Never. So, oh, there we go. It's uh, Hamro. Hamro Kitchen. Nepalese. So not Indian, Nepalese, but you know, in the same wheelhouse. We went, we've only gone once, but it was, it was decent. I'd go back again. So, okay. So we went and did that. The other thing that Dan is known for is that's where, I think that's how BB and him met was from badminton. You know, she's into badminton. That's a thing. Not a huge thing over here. No. But, um, he is actually like borderline professional i would say like no joke he and his girlfriend have played on the national yeah. bermuda team and stuff he's the one that basically heads the badminton club does does instructions and all that sort of stuff i mean like you know when you watch people play badminton hardcore he's one of those people that can do it it's ridiculous so um so one day we plan to go to badminton in the evening but first there's this long railway trail that basically spans almost the entire, I would say country, but island. It's not a huge island, but it's very, very many, many miles of this trail. And, you know, BB's a runner, so she's ran all over it. And she was real excited because there was, they were working on this bridge and she figured, oh, well, the bridge should definitely be done. And we can finally go across that bridge and go on a nice long, we were planning on doing just a walk. So we took a bus out there. I'll basically out walk down to like the main downtown from Dan's took a bus and started it ended up being like a 10 mile walk um and we oh, had to do hike yeah it was it was quite a hike but we ended up having to go around in an awkward spot spot where we're having to like walk quickly at very narrow parts like all the roads in Bermuda are small and people drive a lot faster than you'd think for this. I mean, it's not, not super fast because it's, you know, but it's a little sketchy, especially if you're a pedestrian and you're having to walk and there's no sidewalk and all that sort of stuff. When did you start working for the Bermuda Department of Tourism? <laughs> so I'm really, I'm really selling it, aren't I? But it is fun. It is beautiful. But basically, the that damn bridge wasn't done yet. Oh, jeez. And we found that out, I think, maybe. I guess I think I think Dan and them told us or maybe they told us why but apparently they were putting in the very last footers to have the, the bridge to, to be complete like everything else is pretty much done it looks like it's good to go and the very last ones they're going to put in there was a cave underneath oh no and so the project just halted and now there's i would say a half done bridge but it looks like it's almost done 
So basically, it almost wouldn't seems you like survey beforehand? You would think. I was going to say, man, somebody must have lost their job when that had to around. have. I mean, that's a huge, huge, huge uh, screw up. That's there. a hell of a discovery. Mm -hmm. So we had to walk the long way around that. That made the walk even longer. And the other thing that sucked about the walk was there had been, before we got to Bermuda, I mean, not a drop of rain. It was gorgeous. But before we got there, they had like, a week's worth of rain or something. Ooh. And so there was this one section of the railway trail that we were walking on that all of a sudden got like really, really muddy, like sketchy muddy. And I'm just like, oh man, this sucks. We're kind of powering through it. I was like, man, it smells bad too. Come to find out it wasn't just mud. Oh no. That was the wash runoff of like a farm where there's horses and cows. Oh, and basically it, we were just walking through manure Oh. At that point, so our shoes were covered in not pleasant trees. I do. I mean, did you bring spare shoes on the trip? I mean, I, those were like our walking kind of shoes. So, okay. I mean, you know, that were it wasn't okay. my only pair of shoes. <laughs> we had a check bag. I mean, that's what the that, whole check bag was was shoes. That basically. would be my luck. When I travel, I never bring spare shoes. Hmm. So that would like ruin, decimate my whole trip. I'd be like, go down to the walmart or department store and get like a ten dollar pair of shoes for the rest of the trip just be miserable the whole time well there isn't a ten dollar pair of shoes in bermuda i can I probably guarantee you that but so that was a bit of a bummer but then we we finally make it all the way like i said we just set out into this long day of a, a, a walk we might have even ran that morning no nah, we couldn't have that would have been stupid but long 10 mile walk in the heat we had to stop somewhere to get some water and stuff because it was pretty gnarly. And then we get to the rec center where they do the badminton. And uh, well, even before that, they were doing pickleball. We brought our pickleball stuff, played a few rounds of pickleball. Dan, you know, he's a, he's a badminton guy, but he's pretty pretty dang good at pickleball as well. It's got to translate. Yeah, it, it does to, to a certain extent. So after walking 10 miles, we played... I guess three or four games of pickleball, and then I was done. I, I mean, I'm not good at badminton anyways, and especially after how tired I was. And I feel like there was something else wrong with me. There, like my leg was bothering me or something. I don't know, but I was ready to just sit that one out. And then she played, uh, I think, a game or two of badminton, and then we headed over for that hog penny, uh, the, the quiz that I referenced last time. So that was a big day over there in the Sounds Idaho like a good time. I, I'm... I'm always down for some badminton. That's one thing I miss about having a flat level yard. Yeah. Generally play badminton on our hill. Yeah, well, we I, I actually got a badminton net and stuff for, you know, nice flat yard, play outside, but we've been playing over here at the rec center on Monday nights. It's been fun. Feel free to join us if you want to come out and play some badminton. But yeah, not a, not as big around here as pickleball no. or anything else, really. So it's kind of dying down. Still an Olympic sport. It is. And it's is it's impressive as hell. Fun every... to watch. It's it's just like anything, man. When you watch somebody do somebody that's really good what it's at supposed it. Supposed to look like. Yeah, you know, badminton, ping pong, like those crazy people that are insane. Wildly fast. And like I don't know. Did you see that video? That guy that just nailed some quadruple whatever in figure skating? No. Like I'm not a big figure skating guy, but you watch this thing. You watch this guy's routine and you, you can just tell that this guy is nailing. He's, I don't know if it's, it's like landing a 900, you know, or something like that. Yeah. Like he did, it was a quad and a half. So basically spun around, jumped up and you spin around four and a half times the, and landed. He did it like five times in one routine. It was unheard of. The other thing, like figure skating. He's 19. Yeah. I say figure skating blo blows my mind because like they start at such a young age and it's such like, if, if you want to be on that level, it's such a like dedication of, of, of your life and your body. And then they're retired by the time they're in their middle twenties. Mm -hmm. It's wild. It is indeed. It is indeed. You know what else is wild is that these beers are pretty high ABV. And yeah. you know what? We're starting with the low round, by the way, it's only going up from here, buddy. Oh boy. Boy. So let's go ahead and untap these and then we'll, uh, we'll play a song. We'll come back and we'll drink some more big again. I, I want to say that this is sort of the, their version of malt liquor. What, where was yours from again? Holland. Holland as well. So I, as well. it's probably, is it, was it Amsterdam? Is this, I don't even know if Amsterdam is at the brewery. I don't know. Basically it's hard to read cans. 
when they're foreign. When they're foreign. I mean, it does say beer here in about four different languages, which is cool. Brewed and canned by Brasse et Mis in Boot. Is that what yours says? Mine says uh, Brasse et Mis in Kenneth Ox Pace Bass Par. Okay. <laughs> My Dutch is a little rusty. Yeah, so I don't know if that means if they're the same brewery or not, but I don't know. Either way, this is going down. I, I really could use a beer. It's maybe just tasting better than it would just because I feel like I haven't had a beer in a while, maybe since last Tuesday. Just kidding. Maybe had some over the weekend. But it's better than I would have thought, mainly because I did see the untapped scores when I yeah. was looking these up. I can't imagine they're, they're high. Not, they're not very high. When you get beers like this, that's just a big ABV. I don't think a lot of people are going for taste. But that being said, I do like a big ABV, and it is very drinkable. I mean, I can put this away. I'm going to give it a three and a half, which is higher than its average score on untapped, I will say. It, it's the 86, isn't I mean, I mean, I'm in the same boat. It's better than I expected because I was definitely expecting, like, Good old rot gut. It costs two bucks and it's gonna get you there. It'll do the job. <laughs> um blonde's also not really my usual style. Uh but it doesn't taste how I normally yeah. think of a blonde though. It, and maybe it maybe it's because it's a big ABV. Because very blondes, you don't see eight percent blondes, you know. Perplexing. I, I wouldn't like turn it down if someone handed it to me. Um, I don't know that I would buy it myself. Mm, three and a quarter. It's not bad. It's not, drinkable. Not too shabby. All right. Well, uh, like I said, we're only going up from here. So we'll take a break. We'll play a tune. We'll come back. We'll drink some more big beers from Bermuda on Bruise Day Tuesday. Stick around.